Hey guys, Dan Takahashi here. The price of gold and silver are surging higher. Price of silver, it's gone up about 20% just in the last week and a half. Just in the last two days itself, it's gone up almost 10 to 15%. Huge moves going on. I'm getting a lot of questions. Dan, what should I do? I recommended buying silver and gold and platinum for the past six to seven months. What should I do, Dan? I'm going to try to answer these questions today in about 10 to 15 minutes. For those of you new viewers, my name is Dan Takahashi. I'm a former Wall Street guy. I've been investing almost all my money since I was 12 years old mowing lawns. Then I joined Wall Street as an intern when I was 19 and then created a fund, a hedge fund. Uh, with a partner of mine, he was a mentor of mine uh, when I was 26, and then I sold my stake in that fund when I was 30, traveled about 60 different countries over four and a half years, and then came back to Tokyo about seven months ago and just started all of social media for the first time. Got about 300,000 subscribers and followers worldwide across different channels. Very thankful, guys. And I just started this English channel, English version channel. A few weeks ago so hopefully you'll follow me and subscribe to my channel going forward today i'm going to break down our topic in three main themes number one why did i recommend this in the first place and what was my recommendation why do i like these precious metals and what's the reason behind it this is the most important part of this video guys don't get so enthralled with all the excitement and the drama going on with the price movement understand why Number two, we'll do a chart analysis. Well, I'll do the chart analysis and you guys can listen. <laughs> uh, what do I think? Is this gonna keep going higher? Silver especially, gone up a lot. Number three, I'll give you my recommendation, my idea. So, let's get started. First and foremost, if you look at my Japanese YouTube videos, I've been publishing stuff about gold and silver and platinum for a while. I've liked these precious metals for a long time. I've started watching them ever since I joined Wall Street when I was uh, about 21 years old. Then I've been watching, I watched the whole move up uh, to about 1920 in gold and I didn't own any and I was so pissed off that I told myself next time it goes down, I'm gonna buy a lot. And when it went down to about uh, 1,100 US dollars, uh, I started buying as much as I could uh, around 2015, 2016. And ever since then, I've been continuously just buying long-term gold, silver, and platinum. Also some other uh, precious metals and rare earth metals. And I've been doing this for one really strong reason, because gold and precious metals, to me, are a form of money. Yes, money. And the price of money, should be based on the supply of money. Basically, gold and silver have been used as money for thousands of years. Looking historically, they move, the price of gold and silver moves with the, the monetary base or the supply of fiat currencies, basically money that the government prints. And the largest fiat currency in the world is still the US dollar, it's still the world's biggest reserve currency. So looking at the US dollar money supply should give, historically it's given a good indication of the price of gold and silver in US dollars. So I can express this as one very simple chart. I've talked about this over and over. This is the price of gold divided by the monetary base. This is the St. Louis Adjusted Monetary Base. It matches basically the size of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. So this is basically the central bank of the U.S. and how much money it prints. There's all sorts of measures of money supply. In my experience, this is one of the most accurate. There's M1, M2, M3. There's tons and tons of other forms of money because money is so vague. But this is usually historically the best because... The biggest control of money supply in the world is the central bank because they're the only institution that can print money. 
physically just with a push of a button they can create more money so looking at the price of gold which is one of the oldest forms of money in the world divided by the money supply gives you this type of graph over the last 102 102 years this goes back to 1918. So looking at gold right now even though the move has been very high recently it's still very low when measured with the money supply basically because the money supply has just gone up drastically over the last few years so that was my main reason for buying these i like buying these i recommended buying it for both short term and long term so long term i've been talking about this over and over a long-term portfolio of putting 70 90 percent of your money into this yellow region sorry 79 percent of your money into this long-term investment and within that 20 to 40 percent in this yellow region commodities i've been a bit more aggressive than i'm usually in the 40 percent sometimes even 50 percent range in these commodities just because I'm a big bull. I like these precious metals a lot. But this is longer term investment. Separately, I put out a video, which I'll post uh, at the ending screen of this YouTube video, another video about buying short term. So that's about 30 to 10% of your investment that goes in short term. And this is for investments that you hold from anywhere between one week to a few months. Long term are investments you basically hold until you retire unless you need the money for a cash emergency you try to not touch this you just rebalance when you have to rebalance and you hold these ratios at the bottom so that's so far the story on why i recommended precious metals and what and how i recommended precious metals now let's get into the charts specifically looking at the precious metals i advise based on your experience either looking at the futures or the etfs or maybe the mining companies if you have a bit more experience mining companies can be very dangerous they can move very fast but usually most of my subscribers and viewers i recommended etfs one of the most basic etfs is gld there's another one called iau these are the big gold etfs for silver i recommended slv the large silver etf and for platinum i recommended pplt now the moves have been very significant for silver basically since i recommended it just a week and a half ago it's gone up over 20 percent very big move the volume is big this is silver futures contract as well it's quite big we're looking at gold as well gold is breaking out nicely and it's going up the volume is not quite as big historically but the chart still looks very very strong it's aiming for 1950 i think which was the high that it made in 2000 oh what was it 11 or so so right now it looks like the chart is going back towards that range towards about 1920. however silver is still very very far from its high that it made 2011. same with platinum still very very far from its high and we can see this even more clearly with the gold to silver ratio this is gold divided by the silver price looking at this we can say that even still now this ratio is not really back towards its 10-year average meaning that silver can still outperform gold a lot more same also goes with the gold to platinum ratio as well this is gold divided by platinum this can still go a lot more down, meaning that platinum can still outperform gold a lot. Now, looking at these charts more specifically, all the precious metals have moved higher over the last few days, right? They've all moved, every single one of them. They've all moved higher, but it's important, I've always said in my videos, where is the initiation? What's the catalyst? How and why are these moving higher? That's very important to determine for your trading strategies. We look at this, we see, okay, for example, GLD, the ETF, the volume is not really that different from most days. It's pretty normal. So the S is buying here, but not super aggressive buying. SLV, the silver ETF, very aggressive volume, much higher than normal, right? 
PPLT, platinum ETF. Volume is a little bit more aggressive. Not super aggressive compared with the past, but still aggressive. Looking at this, the precious metals, the biggest buying is occurring in silver. Looking at this chart. That's confirmed by both the ETF and the futures. So I think we need to analyze the silver price chart to get a gauge for the entire precious metals market because I think right now the catalyst in precious metals is silver. I actually said this in my other video a week and a half ago. Among all the precious metals, short term, the silver price, I like the chart the best just because it was a large breakout of a range that was a very long term uh, resistance level, which is right around this level, around 18, 17, or around 19 bucks. If it, bright, if it breaks that level, I was saying in my video, it's a very, very strong breakout. The more dots, the stronger the line, the stronger the resistance level, and the stronger the breakout. This is one of the basics of charts. Now, the biggest question you guys are asking is, okay, should you hold on to this or not? Looking at this and looking how much it's gone up, it's breaking through so many different resistance levels. It's going up very violently. The first thing that stands out to me is right now it's over 20% away from its 25-day moving average, which is this 20 blue line right here. Yes, okay, the MACD is nicely going up. The stochastics are still showing a sign up. It's still very far away from its 25-day moving average. The last time it was this far away from its moving average when it was silver price was going down during the corona crash. It was about 26% away from its moving average. And then it quickly went back up. So looking at that, plus I'm looking at the Bollinger Band. Bollinger Band right now, it's a little bit outside of the range here. I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but it's a little bit outside of the range of the Bollinger Band, which to me indicates that it might go inside the band. So there might be some stability in the price. Looking historically, when the price bursts outside of the band, it tends to snap back in, at least short term. That plus one more piece of analysis. I think that this is not just a move in precious metals, but this is a move in a lot of different commodities. We're seeing oil going up. We're seeing Bitcoin going up. We're seeing a lot of currencies go in the same direction. I think this is actually the real catalyst behind all of this is actually the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is going down long term, but short term right now, it really broke through this flag pattern. And now it's testing a very, very big level, which it has not tested since the coronavirus crash. The DXY, which is the US dollar index, is now at around 95. So this is a very, very big support level for the US dollar. When the US dollar goes down, usually commodity prices go up, basically because most commodities are based in US dollars. Historically, they move in a negative correlation. So I actually think the, price, the chart of the DXY is perhaps one of the most important analysis points for looking at precious metals. Looking at this chart, I think it's DXY, it's actually, actually at a nice support level. So you might actually see some stability in DXY. It might be hard short term for it to move down more, meaning it's a little bit harder for commodity prices to move up. That plus the fact that the silver price, it's about, you know, over 20% away from its 25 day moving average. It's moved up very aggressively. I think it's a little bit hard for it to move up even more just in the next few days. It's possible, but it's a little bit difficult. So what's my recommendation based on this video? My recommendation is simple. This right now, we're talking short term. This has nothing to do with your long-term investments. Again, guys, long-term investments, you put 70 to 90% of your investment money into this, right? After you pay your rent, after you pay your health, after you pay your education, all your necessary expenses, the amount of money that goes in investment, 70, 90% goes into here. Right now, commodities have gone up a lot. So you may need to rebalance your portfolio to make sure you're still in this range, 20 to 40%. If you're already at 60 or 70 because the price of silver has gone up, you may need to put more money into this red region or the green region, or you may need to sell some of your yellow region. It depends on your portfolio. You need to analyze and decide on yourself. However, for the short term trade, the 30 to 10 percent. I also recommended buying around here around the 18, 19 level. It shot up a lot. I think you sell half, especially silver. 
if you bought silver futures or if you bought SLV, I think you just sell half right here. You're probably sitting on a very nice gain. You sell half, see what happens. Maybe even sell three, uh, more than half, uh, two thirds of your position. And I recommend you hold on. Don't do, don't buy anymore, but hold on to your position and platinum because PPLT, I think has a probably a little bit higher move to go, especially the fact that the gold to platinum ratio, it still can go down a lot further to go back to the February lows. However, the gold to silver ratio, it's already past the February lows. So I think there's a little bit less room to run. There's probably more room in platinum. So I would suggest you sell half or two thirds short term, short term guys of your silver position and hold on, do nothing and wait with your PPL position. Obviously guys, this is short term. Long term, you continue to buy and hold and just rebalance the way you need to. So guys, that's my recommendation. Hopefully you found this video useful. Guys, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you could send my channel link to any of your buddies and friends to try and subscribe to my English channel, I would very much appreciate your help. Please also see below for Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. I put out a lot of trading ideas, funny pictures, sometimes just YouTube announcements. Would very much appreciate you following me there. Thanks so much, guys, and I hope you have a great day.